We have just uh, 15 minutes left, which seems... Uh, yeah, okay, all right, yes. I don't have to say anything, though. you just start raising your hands. I think that was the first hand I saw. Great. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm very keen to um, change this situation and come up with, with more positive um, suggestions to go, to go along with the panel and to get their work and, and our work out there, because it's, it's brilliant work. Um, I just chaired a panel at the, LR, the London Book Fair, a couple of weeks ago called Where Are the Women in Translation? And it turned out the women in translation were there, in their hundreds. So I think the next time this panel happens, it should be called Where Are the Gatekeepers Who Give a Crap About Diversity in Science Fiction? That, you know, we, these are the women men don't see in Alice Sheldon's phase. We're here, you're there, the problem is the gatekeepers. They're the ones who need to be coming to the panels to be being held to account, um, as Vida is starting to do, although, of course, many people like the LRB have just turned around and said, we don't care about your statistics. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a boycott. There is a reader's boycott of the LRB, and we're waiting to see what happens with that. So transparency is something that's been talked a lot about in publication. Uh, as well. And I'm also just wondering about uh, picking up on what Karen said about genre boundaries, which are also fiercely contested and tear apart mm -hmm. science fiction groups. And I'm particularly thinking in this country about the boundary between writing for adults and writing for young adults. Oh, yeah. why, why is Julie Britannia not on this panel? Why is Ellen Renner not being invited to be on this panel? Writers. Young adult author, brilliant. Um, <laughs> Sally Gardner won the Carnegie Medal for a science fiction book for children called Maggot Moon. How many of you have read it? It's absolutely brilliant. And I think there's a huge amount of energy in science fiction and fantasy for young adults now because of the success of people like Stephanie Mayer and, and Veronica Roth, whatever we think of their writing. Um, I think there's something to do with coming together there and bringing those teenagers who are passionately interested in science and big questions about the universe across the gap into adult reading of science fiction. I think that's hugely important. What, what um, Naomi said about teachers, there are teachers out there who are really keen on teaching science fiction, but how do we bridge that gap? And I think part of it is to do with us as writers and readers being prepared to go out and bridge it and not creating genre boundaries. Any comments on that? I think it, it, you're right. It's interesting. I mean, I, I have a bit of a pet peeve. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as young adult fiction, for which I was intensely grateful because nobody policed what I wrote and I, what I read, and I read everything at every age. To some extent, one of the things that's happened by creating that boundary is that is that it's yet another way of creating a ghetto. But I do think. There is a there is more adventure sometimes. There is more um, of bridging the, the the diversity gaps in work targeted towards kids, and I'm not sure quite why that is. I don't know if the grown ups think the kids can handle it and the other grown ups can't. I'm not, <laughs> not sure what what underpins that. It does give me hope for the future that that a generation of young people who've grown up reading about a more equitable set of characters and situations will expect that in the fiction they turn to as adults. But but we have created this interesting fault line where the really cool kid stuff sits on one side of it and the generally less cool adult stuff yeah. doesn't cross over. And I honestly don't know why, why that has happened or why we've allowed it to happen. Uh, since my book is crossover, I have readers who are would describe themselves as pure adult SF readers. I also have readers of all ages who happily read young adult. And I think it's true that it's much less of a problem there. These are JK Rowling fans. They, they champion women authors. They appreciate women authors. Um, but there's the young adult readers who can be sort of include grandmothers who've read science fiction for 50 years, picking, you know, sort of, I, I, I get feedback from a huge range of fans. But there's the, there is a sort of dividing line around certain science fiction readers who, ah, it's YA. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, bubonic plague. Um, it's a threat to science fiction. I don't think it's a threat to science fiction. Young adult 
books often push boundaries that adult books would not. They have transgender characters, they have amazing things happening. And these people are, you know, the readers growing up, the J.K. Rowling generation, uh, they don't want to be put in boxes and they're going to be a force for, for good in the future. But we'd like to not necessarily have to wait for, for, them, for them to to grow up and sort of take over adult science fiction. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of hope for the future there. Some more questions, yes, just there. Um, well, this is sort of related to that, and um, kind of self-serving, this is the area on religion as well, like young adult, and for kids, but given all of that, is there a danger then that um, it doesn't make it easier for reviewers of adult books to relegate science fiction written for teenagers and, and kids mm -hmm as, you know, that's what women are good at, but they should leave the adult stuff to adult mm. white men. Like, is there a danger that that's what's going to happen if we're not careful? It actually, or is. That what's it actually has. Happen? If, if you, uh, Julie Chris published some stats yeah. last year uh, on the Tor website, which break down the, the submissions, and yes. it's roughly about 30% 30, 30 of the submissions um, received were, were from women. The young adult, it's about seventy percent. Right. But she, but almost all the comments that were on there, she, she got attacked for, for publishing those those stats. I'd be really happy if people would actually post some comments encouraging people and congratulating people for, for, for publishing stats. I hope people will go home and Google it and actually and actually do that. I did think that the reaction to Julie Chris's piece was was unfortunate to put it mildly because she was actually putting putting the information out there and I do think you're right there is it's again it's part of the ghettoization um, where science fiction is considered somehow a lesser form of literature literature directed at children and young adults is considered a lesser yeah. form of literature women I'm write writing. lesser forms of literature unless they unless of course they are Hilary Mantel in which case they are and and you know the the, the the disconnect there is, is so is so rarely um, is so rarely focused on, but there's also the larger problem, which is that mainstream reviewers aren't reviewing us anyway, really. If we're in if we're in genre, so it you know, you're not wrong, but there's a I don't there's no point in splitting hairs when when you're lucky if even the Guardian will review a handful of science fiction books by anyone of any gender, of any origin at all in the course of a year. It doesn't really happen. We have a question in the second row there. Yeah, um, it was this, this problem with awards. Um, I noticed, for instance, the David Gemmell Awards. There's, mm. there's no women writers there. Women don't write epic fantasy, obviously. The <laughs> Hugo, a, a short list has come out. That's not exactly female <laughs> friendly. Um, is there, I know there's the James Tiptree Award, but is there a case for having a, a sort of a, a women in genre award? So it doesn't have to be just SF, it could be horror, etc. But And having a sort of a big name attached to that to sort of get... Because awards do get new names out there that people have never sort of seen before. And, and can I just <laughs> announce, if you haven't seen it already, that... Um, Karen Lord has just been shortlisted for the for the Locus Award for Best Novel. Yeah. Ju Juliet McKenna wants to say something, I think. Yeah, I want to say something about the Gamble Awards. The all-male shortlist this year, as far as I'm concerned, you can draw a direct line between the numerous bookshop displays I have seen with a line of... George R. R. Martin books mm. and a fixture full of books say if you like Game of Thrones read these that will be 12 male white writers mm -hmm. I have started taking photos of these I have started <laughs> challenging booksellers who say but women don't write epic fantasy and I say yes they do and they say who? Well, me, for a start. <laughs> the conversation quite often goes downhill from there. Um, what we need is any time you see one of those displays, please, for the sake of all of us many women writing epic fantasy, challenge it. Um, that just sort of says it all, because you basically mentioned two fan-voted awards. Yeah. And if you look at academic awards, and if you look at reviewers' awards, you will see plenty of women on those lists. Yeah. Another question on the front row. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be 
slightly um, off centre here because, you know, I was around when lots of the women's presses were set up and they were set up for all of the reasons that you are all complaining about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things that the women's presses did was they created a fulcrum that meant that people in the media who wanted to feel like they were liberal would review and would engage. And, and let's not forget that um, when the women's presses got large enough and big enough that they actually got bought out by yeah. the larger publishers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what the larger publishers then did was strangle those yeah. houses mm -hmm. until they died. Mm -hmm. right? So that it does seem to me that this talk about uh, marginalisation and you know, or, and all of those things is really playing into the hands of the people that are excluding us. Right? And I'm not a science fiction writer, I like to read science fiction. But that exclusion um, is, is, you know, is not going to go away. It's, you know, just by banging on the door, just by doing... The women who set up the women's presses worked in, in publishing. So they didn't, it wasn't authors, by and large, that set up. Mm. It was mm. people that realised from the inside that this industry was antithetical. It was not something that was ever going to welcome. And I think that 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 fundamental, uh, you know, dislike of soft, dewy, whatever it is that they think women are, is not going to go away just by writing statistics or any of those things because all of those things have been done you know I'm getting on you know so mm -hmm. I'm a, this is probably the third time I've sat in something like this and had the same conversation mm -hmm. and I understand the desire to be part of the mainstream but let's be honest the mainstream is white and male and why are they going to welcome difference why it's working very <coughs> well I think, what's, I think what's quite different now is that we can actually shove the information at people and put it on there and, uh, and present it to them in a way that in the past they could quite happily just ignore. Mm. But they're still, still ignoring, ignoring it. it. Yeah. Well, well, I'm just to it. <laughs> we have a question over there. Well, that's not a question, but I just wanted to agree with you. No. <laughs> 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 I think there is a place. Yeah, I think it has to be, because it's systemic, yeah. You know, you have to come at it from all angles, and there is a place for specialised imprints. There's a place for women's presses. You know, myself. You know, I many years ago I used to work at Sisterite, right. a feminist okay. bookstore. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I got introduced to reading more women science fiction writers because um, of women of there was these little anthologies called Women of Wonder. You know, and that was a for me that was a big introduction, and from there I went into reading kind of other stuff. You know, so it helps, it does help. And again, the women's press, again, that I got introduced to all these women, and it was like, oh, okay, you know. So and and it's and at the end of the day, it's about money. These people, these gatekeepers or whoever, they're not in the slightest bit interested. They ignore as many figures and whatever. If there's no money in it, they're not interested. If you can identify with statistics, if you can identify a market that they're missing out on, you know, um, then they might decide to put some money in to promote in your book or whatever, but, you know, and because it is partly to do with the climate, yeah, but they're, you know, publishing's like lemmings anyway, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, one hit wonder with this, and then, it, the, then what they want to publish is everything that's kind of like that, you know, and it goes on, but I really do think there is a place for, and it's not, it only becomes a ghetto if, it it's kind of stays very insular, you know. But it, it can be a launching ground. It can be like a place to move forward and move on from. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of sort of changing the systemic nature of this, I mean, some of the statistics that have been published recently are about you know who who's reading what. Well, it, it seems it seems the statistics bear out, you know, the, the fact that. Women are, are gender blind when they look at a book, and, and men are men are not. Men are men are drawn to, to books um, by by men, and um, not you know will ignore books by women. That's a very general statement. A lot of men, yeah, and many men are you know here and obviously not not you know, not behaving in this way. Um, but how are we going to change that? How are we going to make it cool for boys to read books by girls? Again, it's kind of maybe going back back to teachers. Um, you know, start people young. Um, the Guardian's done a nice thing recently. They've, they're getting 
um, men to talk about, you know, take a photograph of themselves with um, a book that they, by a woman that they, you know, you, it, this needs to be done. I'm sorry, you know, I'm afraid. It's so tragic. This needs to be done, you know, but, um, it, but at least, you know, at least that, that, that did happen. And maybe we can, um, you know, kind of talk, think more about, yeah, boys, boys as well. Um, Stand up, maybe yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just pulling on what you said and, and what you said and, and what you said as well. I was actually I was thinking earlier because you know everyone is saying you know I want um, you know I want my books to be in the mainstream. I don't want people to say well that's a woman writer or whatever you know like oh you know she's writing womany science fiction. Um, you know I want them to consider it on my terms. And but what what I was questioning was whether you know is being part of the mainstream the next step from the women's press, you know, because um, I, in a way, I almost feel like, well, actually, the women's press and you, you having that, that, that being, having longevity is, is what I would personally aspire to, um, you know, and, and I think, um, I think the problem with, with being really worried with gatekeepers and the mainstream is that you end up focusing all your energy on, on the white dudes and, you know, um, who are the gatekeepers, who are the mainstream, and you just, you know, you spend all your time, as you, as you say, you know, banging on the door trying to get in. And actually, you know, I, I sort of wonder, is the, is not the, isn't the, the solution, you know, going up, you know, kind of being separatists and going up and setting up your, you know, the, the like, awesome, powerful, fun, like, party island where, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the gatekeepers will come collectively down the market. So I think the thing, the thing is, first thing is, you know, refocus it around us, you know, the, the traditionally marginalized, as it were, and then get really powerful and rich <laughs> and then like, refuse them entry. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do have uh, the internet now, which mm. is changing things very much. And in young adult fiction, <coughs> it's certainly true that uh, there's an awful lot of people who just like young adult books and have their own blog and do their own reviews. So um, this bypasses the problem of uh, a few specific... Uh, the venues that have, do the reviews and sort of decide who does or doesn't get a review because, well, if everybody writes reviews, it would really revolutionise things. So someone mentioned an award, and actually I think probably the Orange Award now, the Bailey's Award, has done a lot for women's literary fiction, hasn't it? I don't yeah. see, you know... Uh, I grew up with the, you know, the women's press and working in independent bookshops that had big feminist sections. And I remember Silver Moon. And, you know, I, if we still, if we, if we're back, if it's the backlash, and we need to start all that all over again, um, I, I think I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would go for it in a positive way. And I think an award could be a good, good thing to start with. You know, test the waters there and raise the profile. Um, the media like awards, for one thing. Um, festivals like awards. You know, if we're talking about invi invisibility, then we need to, you know, find some ways to just get a handle. You know, get get that brand. What's our brand? Well, we're the women science fiction writers, so we need to, yeah, market the brand. Yeah. Sorry. Can I talk to the Blackwell's representative here? We have quite a few questions still. Uh, can we go on a bit longer? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> obviously, obviously. Um, we will be going over the road to the pub hopefully with some of the authors we will if be people going wanted over the to road come to the pub. and ask uh, yeah. but yes we do want you to buy books there's a lot of books on this table there's a lot of books on that table but if and, we, signing. But, and signing and things so we have got to just a couple more questions um, yeah over actually, there actually yeah mm -hmm. you first um, yeah, so more just a couple of comments. I'll try and keep them short because I've just absolutely agreed with everybody. <laughs> um, but I would say that because I work a lot like as Dorothea over there in terms of black publishers, there are a lot of great, a, a lot of the black books that get published here are because they're done by women publishers. So we have to encourage women into publishing even more. So having those different publishers, as somebody said, is really, really important. And the thing is about the mainstream issue, the problem with that is I've been involved and there have been schemes for example of let's get more black people into publishing and some people really ride off that, some publishers. It's been going on for like 20 odd years, maybe more and the same thing happens. They're in there and because they're not supported at that publishing and editorial level, they then drop out. You know, it's, it's all very well having women in there doing the publicity. You can bring up any publishing company and say, can I speak to Sarah, please? And they'll say she's moved on. Because that's as far...
far as they kind of get. You know, we've got to really be at that other, that top level, at that kind of decision making where they don't get kicked out and where they don't say, well, actually, you know, it's only women who read short stories. Do you know what I mean? Because all, it's all of that that's got to change. It's going back to what the writer in the Don't Panic says. It's, it's before the, the literary agent stage. It's before just that, like, publishers. It goes much deeper than that. And it is all those little things. It's just one thing. It's those little things. So it's that whole institutionalized thing that is an issue, I think. You know, not just... Um, yeah, basically, it's that whole thing is an issue. Yeah. It's the bean counters. It's not because yeah. I, I love the people at Glass. I love my editors. Mm -hmm. I have two there. Mm -hmm. um, they're great, and I do not in any way blame them for my situation. I blame people who've probably never read my books, mm -hmm. who I'll never meet, and are probably white and male and only care about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. We've got another comment over there. I think we should make that the last, maybe. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, Okay, uh, a couple of points. I would like to propose that a large portion of the problems we seem to be having here is down to promotion both of the genre and of, you know, women writing in SF. Uh, in terms of the genre, I uh, was skimming over the Hey On Why Literary Festival programme this year. There is nothing, yeah. nothing yeah. at all in the adult section for sci-fi no. any genre. And that was not the case a couple of years back, because I tried it every two years, and this year I'm just like, well, why bother? They're clearly edging all of that out. It'll, I'll find it in the kids section, sure, but um, it's t it seems to be taken less seriously and that obviously is a bigger issue than, than I've got ideas for. But my other thought was, in terms of uh, kind of promoting women in sci-fi, I was kind of having noticing, is this the cover of the book? Yes, it is. It, is, it does seem to me to be geared towards women. Interesting. Mm. Because it's got a swan on it. Yes. Mm. And I'm looking at like your other book and it's got birds on No, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a touch of that. Yeah. And um, it's all kind of soft and it, it feels very feminine. And I think that men are not going to pick up. We're all susceptible to covers whether we like it or not. Mm. I think there is a touch of that. <coughs> I mean, I think if I was being published, I would probably be happy to go under an initial to try and sneak in and convince people like, oh, hey, this woman's actually all right at writing, and kind of go at it that way. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. I'll shut up and sit down. Thank you all for your comments. Thank you for coming on such a nasty evening. Um, thank uh, Joe Fletcher Books for sponsoring this. Thank Blackwell of course uh, for hosting it here. Uh, you have now got 20 minutes to buy the contents of these two tables but before we do that can I ask you to thank our five authors here.